we're in a very delicate economic climate here, and if you start heaping price increases on businesses, it could be the tipping point to put some of them out of businesses. These are the ones that provide the jobs and the livelihoods for the people in the community. We just need to be a bit judicious. I know some members feel that businesses have unlimited resources, and point that of order. is far from true. Point so uh, I, I Take your point of order. ask caution. Hang on a second. Making it personal. Okay. That was not a personal. Okay. I didn't take it that way, so. Thank you. So uh, I, I can tell you what it's going to be before he even starts with the numbers. It, it's going to be a substantial increase to motels and restaurants who are the larger uh, water users in the community. So it's not fair. We had that substantially significant rate increase about eight or nine years ago, and to do it again at this point in time w would be uh, devastating to some businesses. Any further, Ms. Bell? Uh, it may be that the costs for food and so forth have gone up for the uh, for the businesses and the restaurants and so forth. But it. But on the other hand, it is also true that that uh, the average residence costs have gone up. Uh, their food costs have gone up. Their fuel costs have gone up. Their uh, utility costs have gone up. It has increased at the same rate as, as the businesses. And I'm not saying this is something that we would necessarily do. I'm just asking for the information for comparison's sake. I, I, I am really distressed at all the information that's trying to be withheld, hidden, smoke and mirrors. I'm tired of that. I would like to know the full picture so I can make an informed decision. I'm, I'm really tired of getting fought on that every time I ask for information. I can't get the information, or there's somebody says I don't need the information, or or so forth. I would like to have Point that of order. information for comparison's okay. sake, Mr. so that we could simply see. Mr. Berry, she, 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 went, she got back on. Track. Okay, all right, thank you. All right. We'll do do we, I need to make a we'll motion to ask him? We'll thank you very kindly. That's not. It's not a problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can absolutely. On this, on this issue, um, both on number eight and number nine, the mayor, I believe, Diane, were you at the meeting? Yvonne and I met with a gentleman from Community Resource Group, which operates out of Fayetteville, and this is essentially what they do for small communities uh, all over the state, even in Oklahoma, uh, and they're really experts in this area. And so he took a lot of information. I have to get him some more information. And uh, he's uh, seemed like a very enthusiastic, competent individual. And uh, was just really, and this is at no cost to us whatsoever. So this is in the process exactly how long it'll take him to get us a number. I don't know. But... Uh, uh, because they do work with so many other communities and everything. <coughs> but I'm sure it won't be uh, a long period of time. But we have met with them. That is where it is right now. So May I still have the information I requested? I'll do my best to get it for you, sure. Thank you. Okay. Any further on this? Not Number nine is still postponed. Unless you unpostpone it. I'd like to unpostpone it. Okay. <laughs> I don't see really any. Good? You're going to need to make that a motion. I make a motion to unpostpone it. Second. Okay. Nine. This will be discussion yeah. on the garden meter. Minimum monthly rate discussion. Go ahead. Four I don't four. really see any reason to drag this on. This is not a big deal and part of our our long range um, water health. This is just a. I would like to uh, direct our city attorney to uh, uh, make an ordinance, unless a resolution will do. It says the standby charge does not apply to garden meters. Second. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? Mr. Pena? I heard the word ordinance or resolution. Would it not be, since we are changing current code, it would have to be an ordinance? It would have to be an ordinance. Okay. okay. Are you clear on the I motion? I think I okay. understand the motion, yes. Is everybody clear on the motion? If not, we can restate it. Okay. 
Uh, since it doesn't pertain to the motion directly, so we don't have one. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay. All right. New business. Number one, discussion of budget overspending, missing malfeasance. <coughs> Move to discuss. Motion to discuss. Oh, second. Second. Made and second. The floor is open. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I'd like to open this discussion by saying that that I, I did request from the finance director uh, whether or not a public notice of the uh, financial uh, statement for the city had been placed in the uh, local paper as request as required by law, and I, I didn't get an answer to that from the finance director, but I did find in the interim that that, that uh, information had been posted in the Carroll County News. I'm not sure why it wasn't posted in, in the L Lovely County Citizen, which is what a lot of people around here read, or, or they don't, but it was in the Carroll County News, which a lot of people around here don't really pick up on a regular basis. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Well, as I was looking through that, I uh, <coughs> noticed that when we look at uh, expenditures on that, uh, we look through here and we see the administrative and mayor's office, finance department, law enforcement, district court, emergency si services, building inspector, other commissions and funds, etc. Uh, then we see capital funds, street fund, court automation fund, fireman's pension fund. Let's just choose one, for instance. Let's say the court automation fund. When we look at the court automation fund on this document, uh, it starts out with balance as of January 1st, 2011. It tells you the balance there. And then when you look at the end, it says at the end of that section, it says balance as of December 31st, 2011. And it tells you the balance there. And so on and so forth through the fireman's pension, the district fireman's pension fund, the district court right, retirement, debt service fund, water and sewer fund. But I found it really interesting that over here where we see the administrative and mayor's office, and the finance department, law enforcement, district court, emergency service, building inspector, other commissions, funds, and miscellaneous. It doesn't tell us in those particular uh, sections what the balance was as of January 1st and what the balance was of December 31st. So I found that rather confusing and it was very, it made me wonder why the balance wasn't shown on, on these sections as it was on the other sections. So I just thought that was rather odd. So that being said, let's move right along and start talking about what happened with the budget last year. When I was going through the budget for last year, I found that the mayor's office overspent their budget by $34,219. The police department overspent their budget by $56,520. Fire and EMS overspent their budget by $63,944 for a total of $154,683. That means the mayor's office, the police department, and the fire and EMS overspent their budgets by a total of $154,000, six and $154,683. Then I found that the non-departmental budget had been overspent by $94,633 for a grand total of just these four items of $249,316. That means just these four departments overspent their budget by a quarter of a million dollars. I haven't even taken into consideration water and sewer department, the street department, uh, and transit fund. But if my numbers are anywhere near correct, that may be somewhere near another quarter of a million dollars, which means our budget for the last year was overspent by at least a quarter of a million dollars, probably closer to a half million dollars. So I'd kind of like to know why that happened and, and what happened and where the responsibility lies 
Um, I've had some people tell me, well, Laney, you know, it's your fault. It's the city council's fault because the council makes the budget. Well, yes, the council does make the budget, but the mayor is the one who approves the spending. So if our budgets were overspent by a quarter of a million or a half a million dollars, it falls on the mayor's shoulders, and I'd like to know what happened. Ms. Clark, would you care to address this issue? Since you're the man that crunches the numbers. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> the item uh, here that we're discussing, uh, discussion of budget overspending, miss malfeasance. Um, I'd, like oh. to, I'd like to go into the to the definitions of those just one second. Malfeasance is wrongdoing, misconduct, or wrongdoing, especially by a public official that causes damages. Misfeasance is to take inappropriate action to give intentionally incorrect advice. Nonfeasance, I don't think we can address the other two without addressing nonfeasance. A failure to act when under an obligation to do so. A refusal to do that which is in your legal duty to do. <coughs> so, with that in mind, um, the budget that you're looking at here was the one that was initially <coughs> prepared and presented and the council passed. And um, if you look over you'll see that the general fund which includes the mayor, finance, building, so on and so forth was over budget 200, the budget that was presented $230,729. Well, if you roll back over here to the revenue part of the budget, the budget revenues exceeded the budget that was presented by $233,601. So the biggest majority of that was... Um, a federal grant of some hundred and seventy a hundred and seventy two thousand wait a sec a federal grant of a hundred and seventy five thousand three hundred and eighty nine dollars that wasn't budgeted that we got during the year and that expense for that bu that budget for that grant at the end of the year was a hundred and twenty seven thousand I believe so that's the majority of, of where we're off there but the reason that this budget yeah, one hundred twenty-seven thousand seven hundred seventy-one dollars. So one hundred twenty-seven thousand um, seven hundred seventy-one dollars was due to federal grant expenses, and we got the uh, the income from the federal grant of one hundred seventy-five three eighty-nine. We didn't know we were going to get that grant. So when we got it, it was included in income. When we spent it, and we might not have spent it all in 2011, there may be still some left. But here's, here's the problem. There's a thing that has typically been done in the past that wasn't done last year is it's called a cleanup ordinance, and that's a... a, a a misnomer. It should be called a review. That means a review by the council and an adjustment to the ordinance. And that was never done. And because of that, then you have these numbers that came out at the end of the year the way they did. Probably, if 
you had done the, the review and adjustment, it would have picked up that grant or other grants or expenditures or the need for uh, changes in the budget, but that wasn't done. So consequently, you come out with this type of situation. So that's the, that's the major difference uh, in the budget. And you won't find this in budgets in the past because they were reviewed throughout the year by the council, which you can do any time and make adjustments. Yes, ma'am. The fact remains, the fact remains, these departmental budgets were overspent by at least a quarter of a million dollars without ever coming to the council and asking us for us to appropriate these funds or to allocate these funds. It was simply done arbitrarily. I thought it was very interesting when I went to add this uh, item to the agenda, and I wanted to talk about misfeasance, and I thought it was an interesting Freudian slip that the mayor wanted to change it to malfeasance because I was aware of the difference between malfeasance and misfeasance, and I was only looking to talk about misfeasance, but the mayor said it should be malfeasance, so here we are talking about what happened and why it happened and, and why the mayor is arbitrarily spending the funds without coming before the uh, uh, city council and asking if it's okay. Uh, the mayor spent $24,110 from a uh, from one line item that was only allocated 8,860. 8, 8, so that, that line item was at 272% over what we had expected to be expended there. Those funds were never allocated for him to spend, and yet he spent them anyway. We specifically asked him, we specifically moved to his ta this table for him not to spend those funds, or those funds would have shown up in the approved 2011 budget. What's going on here? Uh, Mr. DeVito. I doubt that council made that direction to the mayor. I certainly didn't. And I assume that none of the rest of the council directed the mayor in that manner. There's a lot of hyperbole being thrown about here, and that is one of it. $250,000 certainly is hyperbole. <coughs> Quart uh, half a million is even more. You don't have the floor. You're not the mayor. Neither are you. It's okay. Let me handle it. Mr. Pell now. Uh, <clears throat> this is a sticky wicket, but first of all, I'd like to uh, go back and address a concern that I had earlier on the CAPC reimbursement. It shows on page three in the 01 fund <clears throat> reimbursement CAPC budgeted $1,000, uh, year to date zero. Uh, that's where I came up with that information. Number two, uh, just out of curiosity, I'd like to ask, and I'm not trying to put Mr. Clark on the spot because I know he's busting his butt trying to manage everything he possibly can with the people he has, but the uh, public notice stated that it was a six-month financial statement ending December 31st, and I don't know if that was a typographical Freudian slip or whatever, but uh, I'm not concerned. Um, the, the other thing to, to say that um, departments uh, overspent their budgets unknowingly because of monies that we didn't know we were whether we were going to get back or whatever. I don't, I don't think that applies to the uh, specific departments that uh, have routinely gone over budget. Um, the mayor's office, as was stated, was 34000 plus over budget. The police department, which had nothing to do with any FEMA grants or whatever was 56000 plus over budget. The 
fire and EMS was 63,000 over budget. Uh, and they were over in almost every budget line. Uh, fund 01 was approximately, unless I've come up with the wrong numbers, uh, around 230,000 over budget. Our revenues were under budget. Uh, street was 377,000 plus over budget. Uh, to, to say that the department heads um, did not follow their budgets is, is probably a, a pretty close statement. However, uh, I do have a question for Mr. Clark. Do, do the department heads get a status of their budget more often than council does? Uh, whenever I produce, <coughs> whenever I produce the budget for the council, I also, and they, as far as I know, uh, I don't know how long it had been, or since they get these their copies of the each budget, but they are getting them now uh, every month as we get them done, so they can see where they are. But one of the things, like in the mayor's budget, that I don't think was budgeted is there's a retirement in there that is some twenty-seven or thirty thousand dollars that uh, was for the a uh, <coughs> clerk's retirement, I believe. Ms. Balance. Never mind. Just never mind. Just go ahead. You I'd like to hear some more rationalization. I mean, I'd like to hear some more explanations, please. Thank you. Mr. Pano. Uh, for clarification, uh, for those that don't know, and that's basically anybody that doesn't have a, a life that's watching, uh, this budget was not approved by this council. Uh, at the time that the retirement became an issue, I would, I would like clarification again. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I would like to know, based on past procedures and normal procedures, where the onus lies with, in the past, if I'm not mistaken, we've had a mid-year budget review and we've had a year-end budget cleanup resolution, and I understand that that's maybe improper terminology, but that's what it's been called in the past. Past councils have met, uh, because when I was on the Planning Commission, I'm going to have to have some water on my way over top, uh, have literally sat down on a monthly basis and gone over the budget. And we can't even seem to come up with a resolution from uh, wherever the right place is, and I don't see it being our responsibility to draw up a year-end uh, budget adjustment resolution, I believe is the name. Thank you. Name that you call it, Mr. Clark? We couldn't even agree on getting together for a mid-year budget review. Uh, I, I think that uh, this city could be in a heck of a lot better situation of having money for infrastructure repairs. Saying that, you know, the bottom line that we may have more money in revenues and expenses does not preclude violation of the law. And that law states that all public officers and employees shall comply with the provisions of the fiscal management and responsibility <coughs> laws contained in Chapter 1477-103 which does not allow overspending. Whether you want to call it misfeasance, malfeasance, I don't really care. It's just somebody not doing their job somewhere, including ourselves. And it just, to me, is totally, and that's one of the reasons, to me, in my, in my thinking, early on in the first year of our term, that to me, it might have been imperative, and it was overridden that the department heads come to, to council meetings periodically and, and discuss issues that they were 
concerned with and which they might have been able to have, have said that, hey, you know, it looks like we're really running short here or we might be running short here because we didn't get the money that we thought. And we even passed a procedure that has been ignored that on a quarterly basis all department heads um, at least address the status of their department where if we're sitting here with a budget report at the end of the quarter that's you know one month into the year which is a little untimely we at least might be able to ask the question instead of looking at numbers of how many police calls there were or ambulance calls or whatever of you know is there, is there something going on that council needs to be aware of to put more money into a certain area and and we haven't been allowed to uh, to do that well there's been a lot of accusations thrown about to department heads and various departments <coughs> here I'd like to know what exactly the council finds so offensive where that money was spent that you don't agree with I mean, I'm sure that these were necessary items. You're just throwing 50,000 here, 60,000 there. What exactly in this budget did you not like having money spent on? And if you want to know where to put blame, it's you and you and you and you and you and me. It's our blame. We have the authority. We have the ultimate authority. And if we don't call them in, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. So this effort to try and throw the blame on the department heads is an abrogation of our responsibility as council, and I accept that responsibility, and I've fallen short on that. So to be maligning the department heads because of our shortcomings <clears throat> without any items specifically designated is an affront to the good people that serve this city. Ms. Bell. <clears throat> I take issue with my colleagues' comments. City Council does not spend the funds. City Council does not sign the checks. City Council allocates the funds and the mayor signs the checks. Apparently from what's going on here, the mayor could sign a check for any dang thing he wants. And you would, and one of my colleagues would say, well, you know, surely it was something we needed. Well, how do we know that? How do we know that if we're not if nobody comes to us and says, well, we need this. We, if it's something we need, we most likely would say, well, you know, okay, then we're just going to have to work it into the budget. We're going to have to rob Peter to pay Paul somewhere. We're going to have to make it up differently. And, and, and so that's, that's completely ridiculous, to use one of my other colleagues' favorite words. <clears throat> and as far as revenues and expenditures, revenues being more than expenditures, that's irrelevant. We budgeted a certain amount to be spent. To be spent. The, if, if we had more revenue, that should have gone into the general fund to be put back for a rainy day, not just spent willy-nilly for whatever somebody wants. A new cop car or this or that. or I mean, whatever it is that they want and whatever they overspent on. Small equipment, uh, just all drug fund expense. I mean, for the, we, drug fund expense, I'm not exactly sure what drug fund, fund expense is, but apparently they're buying too much because the, when they had zero budgeted and it, it turned out they spent $25,647. So there's just one instance. Uh, the building maintenance, and we got to keep up our building. I don't, I don't disagree with that. But the police department overspent their building maintenance budget by 331%. If we had seen that coming, we might have been able to find some funds to help that somewhere, to, 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 to make things right. But we weren't even consulted about it. They just spent it and said, well, it's okay, They'll, the council's going to rubber stamp it, they'll clean it up at the end of the year, no problem, we'll spend whatever we want, no problem. But it is a problem. To me, it's a big problem <coughs> when the th funds are being overspent Mayor. like that, that there's, they're not being yeah, put back where they should be. Uh, I will stop before I get any more upset than I am because I'm very upset about what happened. I don't think it's right, and I think we need to do something about it post-haste. Mr. Berry. Yeah. <laughs> It brought up, we are the problem. We didn't do the mid-year budget review like it should have been done. And we didn't do it because of the issue revolving around the retirement fund. The council refused to set up and have a budget review. And we probably did the same thing for not having the, the final budget review. 
My esteemed colleague talks about 331% over. Well, that amounts to $5,000. Yeah, it's $5,000. That's a lot of money. 331% seems like a hell of a lot. But, you know, in the overall scheme, the police department was what? It was 56000 over. That was 6% over their budget. If we could have caught this, and we get these reports every month. I don't know about you, but I get it every month. And we go through this and we look at it. It may be a month behind because it takes a while to get it, but we're still looking at this. So it is our responsibility to look at this. And when we see items that the budget, and I'm certainly not going to micromanage the police department or the fire department and tell them that I don't know what this drug fund is, if their bottom line is still within their 50% or whatever percentage per that month, this being um, March, so we'd have a 0.3% um, a or 30% or something like that, 25%. Uh, if that's within that budget and one's 50%, but another one's 10% and they're still down in there, I'm not going to be real concerned. And when we look at it, the mid-year budget, and we're coming up on this soon, this time goes by real quick. Here we are in April, May, June. Well, by the time we get the reports, it's going to be July. And if we're not careful, it's going to be August. I've been on this council before, and I've seen these things get by until it's September before we do a mid-year report. And it's, it's hard to, it's not hard, but then we still got to play catch-up. And so it's our responsibility to look at this. I'm not thinking, I, and I don't know if, if Ms. Balance is accusing the police department and the fire department of misspending their money, and it sounds like the mayor spending money willy-nilly. It's up to us to look at this. I'm not going to micromanage and say, this is, you know, you can't do it here. I'm looking at the overall percentage. That's our, that's our responsibility. In there. And I'm going ahead and looking at some of these things. We look at workers' comps and some of these things we don't have any control over. The gas has gone up. But gas fluctuates. So we don't know. Sometimes the police department and fire department are going to need more money. And it's our responsibility to make sure that we look at this in the mid-year budget and we adjust it. The bottom line is we still need that, you know, we can't overspend what we don't have. And I think as long as we're still trying to do this, and I'm not sure what the issue is here, if it's any issue that needs to come up, is we need to take a more look at taking these things at the mid-year budget or maybe even a quarter if you want to do it quarterly. But somehow, if that's what your concern is, let's do a quarterly review. But let's do the review and approve it. A budget is a budget. That's all it is. It's, it's fluctuating, and we know that to begin with. And we mentioned that. So, Mr. Clark. Well, I'd like <coughs> to just address uh, two or three of the issues that have come up. Um, one is that every check that leaves out of here in whatever fashion requires two signatures. For the most part, it requires the mayor's signature and the clerk treasurer's signature. And I've watched both of them sign the checks, and they analyze what the checks are for. And, and if they have questions, it comes back to our department to see if we have the proper documentation and everything, and was this a necessary expenditure. The other thing that I would like to say is that I don't think the people of Eureka Springs really know how lucky you are because I've only been here a short period of time, as most of you know, but every Tuesday morning at, <coughs> at 9 o'clock, we have a department head meeting in the mayor's office downstairs. And if you could sit there with me and listen to how these guys talk about their jobs, what they're doing to try to save money, what they're, you know, we're trying to cut costs here, you know, we want to do this, but, you know, we're limited on funds. I'll give you a prime example. Uh, uh, we had an old vehicle, I guess, at the fire department. And uh, if it had been sold as a vehicle, it would have been worth about $250. If it was sold as scrap, it would have been worth about $1,000. Well, 
So the decision was made to sell it for scrap because it wasn't worth anything. Well, all the tires and wheels were taken off because they could be used for spares on the current vehicles. All the batteries were taken out, not only for environmental purposes, but because they were still good and they could be reused in current vehicles. And this goes on around the table, just different people and, you know, even to putting up Christmas decorations at, at Christmas time, how can we do it the most economical way? And and I'm just, I will tell you, and I've sat in a lot of meetings, but I have never seen a group of department heads that are any more conscientious than you have here in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And I just, you know, I'll go to bat for them any day, any time, anywhere because I believe in them that much and I think you should be really really proud of that fact. Mr. Balance, this is the last time we're getting long in the tooth on this one. What my colleague brought up micromanaging. I do not agree that we are trying to micromanage. I don't even agree that we're trying to manage. This has gotten way out of hand and we're not even managing let alone micromanaging. <clears throat> As far as mid-year reviews and, and whatever you want to call the other stuff, it would seem to me that the senior members at this table would have at least a responsibility to bring this stuff forward. I mean, some of us are reasonably new. There's people who've been at this table at least one other term, and some of them many more than one term, and yet they show a, a, a severe lack of concern or a lack of sunshine, just shining the light on it and say, well, this is this and that is that, and this is why this is and that is why that is, and, and we need to do right. this, that, we need to do that. And so, so I would, Balance, I would, you're out of order, Miss Balance. Thank you. You're making it personal now. So, Stop. So I, I'll, move, Balance, I'll move right along then. Thank please, you. Please, thank you. And as far as department head meetings, I know our department heads are probably trying to do what they can with what they got, but they are dipping in pretty deep and not saying anything to us about it. And we'll just have to take your word about how much they're trying to do this or how much they're trying to do that because those are closed door meetings that nobody is welcome to other than the finance director and the, and the mayor and the department heads. We can't even have a scribe in there taking notes to let us know what happens. It's closed door meetings. It's secrecy. It bothers me. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. DeVito. Do we have an invite to the Department head meeting. Anytime you get ready. Thank you, sir. I can't make Nobody's it, but asked. I appreciate the invitation. Nobody's ever asked. Not one time. Imagine that. And I'm also, uh, I'm just going to say something here, and I want this made very clear that that Mr. Clark has been in office for six months, five months. Um, minimal visits to his office to ask him questions about this very issue. Minimal visits, minimal to none visits. Let's put it that way. Uh, only last week did Miss Ballas request that information. So Why is that inf information not forthcoming? Why do we have to beg for it? Why don't you just go asking for it? I had to put in an FOIA to get this. Four months. Three point months, point of order. Point okay, okay, of okay. order. Just slow down. I asked you a question. You got to do the I had to put in an FOIA okay. to get the year in budget. Okay. okay. But we were supposed to have January fifteenth. We didn't get it till at least two, almost two months later. Okay. What are we supposed to do about maybe, that? Maybe he was trying to learn how to do it. Did you ask him? Or you just throw I have FOIA. Spoken to him. I have spoken. Okay. To him. Thank you very much. Uh, any further discussion on this issue? Mr. I have a question in regards to discussing <coughs> issues with department heads by people at this table. Uh, is it your direction that if you aren't here that there is a representative from the mayor's office that is supposed to be available uh, if any council member meets with a department head or is that just based on the council member that's meeting with the department head? I'm sorry, I don't understand your question, sir. Try it again. Okay, I'll, I'll get down to the to the net. No, I'd, one of the reasons that I hesitate to even walk into an office other than trying to defend myself, uh, when when we were invited, 
by email by yourself to question Mr. Clark. Uh, I set up an appointment and I was met at the door after I told Mr. Clark I was here by Ms. Klein, which I can understand because of, of Mr. Clark's short time on the in the position of bit, maybe not being able to uh, answer any questions that I might have or in it, <clears throat> all of the questions. But I was also met by your assistant saying that she was there representing the mayor's office, and I found that very, uh, even for myself, very uh, intimidating. That why why would you know me coming in to ask the finance director questions have to have a representative from the mayor's office present? So because that ex that explains one of the reasons why I do not come to to city hall or the department heads asking questions. Sir, I can't help it if you're intimidated by Ms. Wilkinson. I, I, no, by I, your direction that she attend. Yes, sir. Did. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. Okay, and, and okay, I'm going I'm to retract an, uh, a, a statement I just made. Uh, my department heads and what we discuss is going to stay exactly that. So, no, you're not welcome at the department head meetings. Let me make that statement very clear. It's for me and my people to take care of, and that's exactly what we'll do. Okay? Is that understood? Thank you very much. Now, anything else? All right, if not, we'll move on to number two. Resolution refunding series 2007 sales and use tax bonds. Last week, all right, motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Okay. Last week we had two gentlemen here from Little Rock and one from Fayetteville to discuss this issue. We had a quorum here, but it was voted, two voted to listen to them, one voted not to listen to them. The minute the uh, meeting lasted approximately nine to ten minutes and they were out of there. These gentlemen stayed at my request, which was, a, I believe, the appropriate thing to do, and they went through uh, what they were going to talk about. Um, it was to save us some money, possibly make us some money. Um, I don't have any intention of calling these men back up here again to readdress this issue. So, with that said, the floor is open <coughs> for discussion. Mr. DeVito. Uh, what's the necessary mechanisms that we have to uh, enact in order to refinance these bonds? Mr. Please have a resolution. A resolution. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. DeVito, they had prepared a resolution that the council needs to pass to, uh, to do this, and uh, they have a timeline oh, yes. here. Oh, yes. Each one of you should have had a packet. Um, and uh, to get and of course, this is all based on interest rates and how they ebb and flow, if you will. And uh, uh, but this was this was this timeline was predicated on the fact that we would act at the last meeting when they were here. But I think we can still pretty well do it. And talking with them, if we we'll, if we will, in fact, uh, proceed. And interest rates stay favorable for us. What most of you probably already know, and Mayor, if I may just address this yes, you may. very Please do. briefly, is that on these bonds we're paying uh, about 4.6% interest, I believe, and with this refunding, we can get that down to probably below three, and uh, or around three, and uh, depending on what the interest rates are, and so the net present value benefit of that would be $304,741.27 that we would save in interest if we do this and agree to it. And they have structured it, they have structured it so, well they've got on the front page here, current average interest rate is 4.59 and uh, the anticipated interest rate right now would be approximately 2.95, resulting in debt savings <coughs> to the city of approximately 322000 with approximately 280000 of that savings 
being realized by August 1st of next year. So they've structured the bonds where they're moving the bulk of that savings up to within this, this next year. So, yes. Mr. Is, is this different from... Let, let him... He had his hand up. Oh, Mr. He, F. he acknowledged me. I'm sorry. I thought he oh, okay. was... I didn't see right. him. Mr. Effio. Yeah, I would like to uh, give this resolution a number and read it and move along. Take it. Now, Mr. Pinell, go ahead. It's okay. I'm sorry? That's okay. Ms. Balance. Um, when was the last time this series was refinanced, refunded? I don't know that this particular series was refunded. I, I, I can't answer your question because... I don't have that. There was, there have been other issues that have been refunded, but I don't know if this particular one. Has. Okay, I have a question that I'm not real clear on. Aren't we supposed to pay off bonds within five years? No, no, no state statute that says we have to pay them off no. within five years. Okay, one more question, if you please. Uh, what is the cost for having this done? I, I mean, these people from Stevens. They probably don't do this service for free, do they? Well, I don't think so. Well, what will it cost us to have them perform this hmm. service? Uh, it will, as I understand, the total cost will be in the neighborhood of sixty, maybe sixty-five thousand dollars for the whole thing. Stevens, um, Friday, Elders, and Clark, and the whole bit. And it'll come out of the out of the proceeds of these bond sales. Okay, thank you, Mr. Riffin. Uh, I was just going to say, I think most cities do this about once every seven years or so, and uh, it's pretty standard. Depends on what the interest rates are doing. But depending on the interest yeah. rates, and we're pretty low so right now. In, and right now we're yeah. in a good position to do this. It seems like a good decision. Anybody else? Okay. We have a motion. Does everybody have a copy of this and have read over it yeah. from the last time? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Raphael, remake your motion, please. Uh, a motion to uh, give this resolution a number and I'll read it. For discussion. For, for discussion. Yes, there's a second. Second. Okay. Made and seconded. Uh, since this deals with the resolution, we have to roll call it on. Oh, it should be. The pending resolution. Right. I will have another vote on it. You'll have one more vote, yeah. yeah. Miss Balance, I'll abstain. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Pownell? Yes. Dr. Kirkpatrick? Yes. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. DeVito? Yes. Mr. Raphael? Yes. 501. Okay. <laughs> the resolution number will be 596. Resolution authorizing Stevens Incorporated and Friday, Eldridge and Clark LLP to proceed with a bond issue to refund the city sales and use tax refunding and improvement bonds series 2007. Whereas the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, the city has outstanding its sales and use tax refunding and improvement bonds series 2007, the 2007 bonds and whereas the city can receive a debt service savings by refunding the 2007 bonds. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, Section 1, that the city expresses its intent to work with Stevens Incorporated as underwriter and hereby authorizes Stevens Incorporated to work with Friday, Eldridge, and Clark, LLP, as bond counsel, to prepare the necessary documents for the refunding of the 2007 bonds. Section 2, that the terms of the sale of the refunding bonds, including particularly without limitation, the purchase mm -hmm. price, interest rates, maturities, principal amounts, and redemption dates, shall be subject to the approval of the City Council. Any further questions? Mr. B. I would move to signify approval by reading resolution number 596. 
Second. Second. Well, uh, just a little extra word so we'd know where we were. Second. Yeah, made in second. This would be a voice vote, yeah? No, this one should be a vote. Okay, roll call votes. Also. <clears throat> Mr. Berry? Yes. Mr. Raphael? Yes. Dr. Kirkpatrick? Yes. Mr. Pownall? Yes. Mr. DeVito? Yes. Ms. Balance? I abstain. 501. <clears throat> All right. Next is agenda setting. Motion to discuss. Oh, that's right. Oh, no. We'll go in a second. So okay, Mr. Berry. <coughs> I'm not sure of the dates, but uh, whatever the dates would for the hospital people to show up, was that the May 14th? That uh, get the accountant and. Uh, the 14th. It was just 14th, whatever date that is. I'd like to put that on the agenda for that. The second Monday is the meeting. Yeah, for so that meeting. I would like to put the uh, move to amend the resolution uh, um, for discussion on, the, on our next meeting. <coughs> Second on Butch's also. Okay, I think there was. I couldn't. No, I don't know if anybody seconded or not. I didn't hear it. No. Okay. Second. Okay, made and seconded. It's on the ballot or on the agenda. And Thank Mr. Raphael, would you please restate it, please? Uh, to put the move to amend uh, resolution. For discussion. Oh, then, okay, I understand what you're saying now. And also to um, discuss a mid-year budget review. Which which resolution? Uh, the one about the uh, Citizens United, the ones they oh, spoke okay. about tonight. I'll, I'll second. I'll second his first one. What was the second one, please? Second one was discussion a mid-year budget review. Second. Okay. Anybody else? Ms. Balance. Uh, I'd like to add to the next agenda a discussion of perhaps writing a resolution to let the state know that we're not in favor of having our water fluoridated. There's a second? Second. Anybody else? Mr. Panel. Uh, I'd like to add a discussion of uh, actions towards non-participating commissioners on several commissions. Second. Non-participating? Yes. <coughs> Any second? Anybody else? Okay. Next up is Council Comments. Mr. DeVito. No comment. <coughs> Mr. Barry. No Mr. Raphael. No comment. Ms. Balance. No comment. Dr. Kirkpatrick. No comment. Mr. Pannell. I'm going to be the oddball. I'm glad to be back, kind of. Thank you. Welcome home. A list of events upcoming will be April the 25th, the Employee Appreciation, saying thank you to all of our city employees and the fine job that they do. April the 27th and 28th is the School Music Festival at the Auditorium. April the 29th is the St. Petersburg Quartet at the Auditorium. Uh, I've been told that this, this young lady, I believe, is very, very prolific in her art. Also, the May Festival of Fine Arts begins on May the 1st, May the 3rd through the 6th, Africa and the Ozarks, May the 4th through the 6th, PT Cruisers 12th Annual Event, May the 4th, Passion Play Opens, May the 5th, Outrageous Parade at 2 p.m., May the 6th, Ozark Corral at the Auditorium, May the 11th through the 12th, Band Music Festival at the Auditorium, May the 12th, Gallery Stroll, May the 13th, Happy Mother's Day. May the 13th, John Two Hawks at the auditorium. On top of that, in the middle of the table, you see a, a Chris Lynn Award. It is our 30-year award for Tree City 
We're the oldest tree city in the state of Arkansas. Uh, today we planted three dogwood trees, I believe one or two at Harding Springs and one at the library. Uh, kids, the, high, the elementary school kids got to participate, the Boy Scouts participated, our arborist Chris Fisher was there. Chris Fisher, yeah, I believe Fisher. Mm -hmm. um, it was a great event. Um, we had a presentation of colors. It was it was worthwhile. Should be in the papers for everyone to see upcoming. Um, I think that's all I got right now. Second, second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you.